Hi students, welcome to week 12. Um, this is the first week that we're going to be shifting into health policy and applying our economics concepts into policy, which we're going to do for the rest of the semester. So healthcare policy is meant to improve markets for health care and for health insurance. And we have some problems in these markets. Things like monopoly pricing for doctors and specialists, um, medical arms races, and oligopoly pricing because there are so few providers often. Um, and that's in healthcare and insurance. We have these issues of adverse selection, under insurance, and moral hazard and overuse. So policy tries to address these things. One of the first problems with developing kind of a national health policy system is just problems with democracy itself, um, which is explained pretty well by Kenneth Arrow's impossibility theorem. So the Arrow impossibility result about like designing, you know, designing a national health care system, it's a problem of optimization, similar to the task when we studied um, the individual who was maximizing under the Grossman model. You kind of have to decide how much time and money you know you want to invest in your health as a result of your preferences and also your capacity. Um, and so the same thing, it's like kind of a similar situation at the society level that you have to decide what your optimal allocation towards healthcare is going to be and find a way to reach that. But the problem is that it's not a perfect analogy between the individual and the society because it's difficult to um, really understand what the society actually wants. So just a kind of like a basic example of the arrow impossibility result. Imagine that there's three people in this um, society and they have to vote between eating a steak a burger and a grilled cheese, okay? So let's first just consider the steak and the burger. Um, out of these three people, person A ranks it higher, so they're ranking it like which one's their first best, second best, and third best. So person A prefers steak to a burger, and person C prefers steak to a burger. So that's most of the people preferring steak to burger. Okay, then we can compare, right, so most people, two out of three, prefer steak to a burger. Next, we compare between the burger and the grilled cheese. Person A prefers burger to grilled cheese. Person B also does. So most people prefer burger to grilled cheese. Um, so if you prefer steak to a burger and a burger to a grilled cheese, you would assume that you would also prefer a steak over grilled cheese. But when you compare just those two, again, most people like the grilled cheese over the steak. That shouldn't ever happen for an individual person. If you like A better than B, and you like B better than C, then you definitely prefer A to C. But when you're looking across a group of people, that's not always the case. So you can have the same kind of problems through democratic control over any issue. And so you can think about it specifically over health policy. Some people might prefer single payer to the public option or the public option to the ACA, which is the current law. Um, but how do you know which one is the first best, second best, and the third best for everybody overall? It's really difficult to, to find out. Um, in general, democratic choices, meaning voting, it depends on the options that you have in front of you and not necessarily on the best, like just the theoretical conception of the best possible option. Because majority rules is, it is a flawed way of collecting all of a society's preferences. It might be the best way that we have. Democracy is, you know, I mean, we just don't really have something better than that. But it is going to be flawed. And so it's really difficult to define the first best or optimal health policy for a particular country. Regardless, within that framework, we do end up having policy decisions that kind of come out of this political process. Um, and we can assess these policies in terms of which one is better. We're going to look um, across three dimensions or three goals of health policy. Health, wealth, and equity. So the assessments can't necessarily define which one is best, um, but it does let you 
at least evaluate and understand what those trade-offs are between the different policy choices available. So that's what we'll do this week.